Okay, um, our section 8.4 out of our textbook deals with polynomials. Just a quick reminder of what we were dealing with at the beginning of this chapter. We already have a test that we've done over the first three sections. Back in 8.1, we defined a monomial as either a number, a variable, or a product of numbers and variables. So it was just a big, long multiplication. What we couldn't do is divide by a variable. If we did that, we wouldn't be able to call it a monomial. We're also saying it wasn't a monomial if there was an addition or a subtraction happening. Uh, the reason for that is because we have a different names if uh, monomials are separated by addition or subtractions. If they are, it could be either a binomial or a trinomial, and if there's even more individual pieces to it, which we'll see below here, it'll spin under the general category of polynomials. Poly means many, so it has many terms. Uh, the exact definition we're going to use is a polynomial is a monomial or sum of monomials. Sum meaning addition. Technically, they can be subtractions if you think of adding a negative. When we classify polynomials, it's by the number of terms they have. I've been saying terms for a little while now. Uh, what I first told you is going to be just a single piece that kind of fits the description of a monomial. One term is separated by another, either by an addition or a subtraction sign, a plus or a minus sign. Okay, if there's only one term, there's only one big long multiplication, we're going to say it's a monomial. Prefix is mono means one, bi means two, and tri means three. So it could have one piece, two pieces, or three pieces. Three individual terms, and if it has more than that, we're just going to go with a general polynomial as the description for it, so if it happens to have four or five terms. First thing we're going to do in this section is be able to classify polynomials as one of those three options, and we still have the option of saying no if we happen to divide by a variable. If you look at this first example I have, it's just the number 10. If you have just a number fits the description of a monomial. More specifically, it's called a constant, just a number with no variable attached. So, according to our directions, you got to answer, is it a polynomial? Yes, and then be more specific with it, and also state that it is a monomial. The second example has an x squared. It also has a 10. They're separated by a subtraction sign. So there's two individual monomials in theory. So I'm going to say these two terms together are a polynomial and specifically they are a binomial. There's two pieces there that you're looking at, two terms. Okay, even though this is just one piece not separated by addition and subtractions, it doesn't meet any of these categories of mono, bi, or trinomials because of dividing by a variable. On those, the directions just want to say, no, it's not a polynomial, and we can move on from there. There's one more. I'll use the same set of directions on. Move my screen a little bit. x squared is a monomial, 10y is a monomial, and 7x is a monomial. So I'm going to say there are three individual terms here, separated by a subtraction and an addition sign. So, with those three terms, we'll say yes, it's a polynomial, specifically it is a trinomial. The amount of exponents the terms have, whether their variables are different, that doesn't matter to us. Just individual pieces, the only reason to say no at this point for us is you happen to see uh, dividing by a variable. It doesn't fit our description. After that, a uh, second topic for us was going to be Understanding what a degree of a monomial and degree of a polynomial mean, you got to understand the monomial first to go on to the concept of the degree of a polynomial. The degree of a monomial, by our definition, is going to be the sum of the exponents on its variables, not exponents on the coefficients or constants. That's not going to matter to us. We're just adding the exponents among the variables. So you look at this first expression I have. And you're going to have an x squared and a y to the third. Together, they have an exponent of 2 here, 3 here. So as a degree of 5, you add those exponents together. When you happen to have a coefficient, yes, it does have an invisible 1 here. And same thing with 
are variables in the invisible one, but we're not con concerned at all with exponents on numbers, only exponents on variables. So 10x has a degree of 1. We only care about the invisible one that's on the x. 4 by itself is a constant. You can think of there being an x to 0 power here or y to 0 power here. We've talked about in the past exponents of 0 just turn the entire thing into 1 and it just disappears for us. So this has a degree of 0. We don't care about the invisible 1 on the 4, so there's no variables involved, degree of 0. Taking that same concept further into polynomials, could be a binomial or a trinomial, doesn't matter to us. You're going to pick the highest degree of any individual monomial. So the monomial of 6x squared has a degree of 2. This monomial of y to the third has a degree of 3. Together, this entire expression has a degree of 3. Just choose the higher of those two. So, the number 10 has a degree of 0. x has a degree of 1. That binomial, that expression has the degree of 1 overall. Adding exponents as long as it's within a term, within one monomial, this has a degree of 10, the subtraction of 2, there's no variable involved there, has a degree of 0, and then 5x to the 7th has a degree of 7. So this is a trinomial, it has three pieces to it, but you don't want to add all the exponents across, just within each individual piece, so together, the highest degree of any monomial is 10, so that entire expression has a degree of 10. Below this, these are the last three examples I'm going to do in our section that does talk about a whole different concept involving ascending powers of x, but we're just going to focus on the descending in this set of directions and ignore the next. So, we're going to arrange terms. We're not simplifying this. None of these are like terms. They cannot be combined. You're not solving anything. It's not an equation. But we're going to look at the powers of x and put them in descending order. And if you remember, descending is from big to small. You're getting smaller as you go. So biggest exponents on an x, you're going to write first. The smallest exponent on the x value, you're going to write last. So this is a trinomial. We have a x to the fourth, an x to the first, and an x to the eighth. We're going to write them from small to big, just kind of reorder all these terms. None of the numbers are going to change at all, just the order. Other than my mouse going crazy and slowing me down, we get this done. We got a negative 5 x to the 8th power. I'm taking this entire thing, the sign comes with it. It has the highest exponent on x, it goes first. The 3x to the 4th is positive, thus I'm going to use an addition sign. And the 9x to the 1st power as the smallest exponent on an x value. You want to put the invisible one there, you can, of course, but it's not necessary. It had a negative attached to the 9, so we write this subtraction over here. Reorder them. Highest exponent goes first on the x values. Smallest one goes last. So we have x squared. This really x to the 0 attached to that 2, and an x to the first, so x squared x to the first, and no variable whatsoever going last. Reorder them in descending order. The main benefit of this, we're going to try and do it for the whole rest of the year, is so that all of our answers can really look the same. It makes it easier for you to check your work, makes it easier for me to grade on your tests and quizzes, and it's slightly different than the concept of degree, since we're just talking about powers of x. I don't need to have the y to 6 really affect anything, and it's the y to 9 ninth does not affect anything. Yes, if you're thinking of degree, this has a degree of 10. Add these together, it has a degree of 104. This has a degree of 9. But we're really just talking about powers of x. So, because this x to 5th, and this last term has an x to 7th, x to 7th is really going to go first. So, 5, this must be a w. 5w, x to the 7th z. That has the highest exponent on x, so it goes first. Then I can go down to the exponent of 5 and the exponent of 4 after that. Once again, keeping their signs with them. 
Just rearranging the terms is all we're doing here. So, different than degree, just focus on powers of x. That way, most everyone's answers can look the same. We just kind of get in this habit for the rest of the year. It's be a little time saver for us. Like I said, you'll see in your section, it referring to arranging things in ascending powers as well, but we're skipping that set of directions. So, all it's going to be is the exact opposite of what we did from above. That's the entire section for us in 8.4. Should be a pretty easy transition after we had that fairly difficult test, and then we'll get into combining like terms in section 8.5.